Okay, guys, you want new information, so I may do a couple of these with new information. So, one of the biggest questions that everybody's had for a long time is where, when, and how did we come, where did we come from? <clears throat> so, I'm going to answer that. And as, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody's ever said this before, but it's been three years. I think I've made just about everybody mad and disagreed with everybody, so hey, why not? So, the way that humans were created, first of all, they were created by Gaia in the fifth dimension. The actual original design of a human being that you see nowadays, a head, two hands, two legs, you know, all that stuff. That was originally designed by Gaia in the fifth dimension. Now, Gaia does do physicality in other games, so she is somewhat comfortable with down to a certain a certain dimension, as you guys call it, that she can work with. She knows how to work with those frequencies. So she created all the magical creatures uh, that you don't that you know about and the ones that you don't know about. And she's also the one that created the original human. The original human was all races together. Okay, she did create male and female, but she was from her. Expertise is from the higher dimension. So she was able to do the light-dark thing, uh, fractal, and the male-female fractal. But at that point, humans were still very high in 5D. Uh, they had very little amnesia, just like most beings do in, in the fifth dimension. So when she went to drop it lower, because the agreement was to go to what you call th third dimension, um, dimension. That's what she agreed to do. Even though she didn't have any expertise in it, well, nobody else did either. So, uh, there are lots of beings in the fourth dimension, though. And the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension are very, very, very different. Very, very different. It's like, oh, I don't have my board here, but like fifth dimensions, it's like a circle that's got a criss and a cross and a criss and a cross, like ten of them. That's how many times it's fractal down. Then fourth dimension, you take that circle and you go crisscross this to about 10,000. And then when you go to 3D, it's like 10 million crisscrosses. Okay, that's how they, those energies fractal out and create very varied, um, diverse perspectives and experiences. Uh, so, because basically what you do is you can take one now moment and you can fractal that down and in that one now moment... In all it is, in God's state, you're going to have one experience. Because you're God, you can see it from all different directions. But if you add amnesia, linear time, and you start breaking that one now moment down into different separate parts, then you can see it from all these different perspectives, which is the point. That is the reason why you are here. That's the reason why everything was um, created. It's to take a now moment, instead of taking... What I usually do is I go out to the big all that is and this whole big thing and I grab this moment and this moment and this moment and I squish them together and I make something. I go, whoa, but I've got all this to choose from. I take from the all big picture. Whereas this game is exactly the opposite. You take a small part of the all that is and you go deeper within looking at it on a microscopic level-ish. An electron microscopic, microscopic level. So once she created the humans, then she started to go into 4D and started having, well, she, they don't really have problems, but um, she was struggling in a way. She didn't know how to create the humans in the fourth dimension. What do you do? How do you fractal that down? So um, as they headed down into 4D, most of the magical creatures that inhabit Gaia's fifth dimension, they stayed there. Because they weren't going to be remade. They weren't, you know, they made the decision they didn't want to go to those lower dimensions. So they stay, and they've stayed on that part of Earth that has always stayed in the fifth dimension. And that's kind of hard to explain. But it does go down, and then it collapses back up. So there's a part of 5D Earth that has always been there. Since she came down, it's been there. And the beings that wanted to stay around, the ones that didn't leave the game altogether, are still flitting around on that earth. Now, she did not make one man and one woman. 
uh, because that's stupid. Uh, one man and one woman would create babies that would be marrying babies, and that's just not smart. She created a bunch of men and a bunch of women. And, um, yeah, that's how it's done. She makes the bodies, and then she called for consciousnesses that wanted to come play, and they inhabited the body. That's how it happened. Okay, so now we're going down into fourth dimension, and she called for help. So the physical body of Gaia started to transform into other beings. So it kind of left the fifth dimensional people. The fifth dimensional people, um, some of them have a really wide range. So they could hang out with people in the fourth dimension. A lot of them couldn't, but there were quite a few that you've heard of that definitely were around while Earth was in the fourth dimension before. And they're back now. You can see them now if you believed in them. And it's because their range is so broad. They stay in the fifth dimension, but they can reach, see, and interact people in the fourth dimension. Um, not really, they can't really do that in the third dimension. So anybody that was in the third dimension who interacted with a magical creature that was a true magical creature, it was because the third dimensional human had raised their vibration to a fourth dimensional level in that moment, in that time. Because they don't go down to 3D, the magical creatures, no way. Uh, they have a hard, there's only a few of them, handful, I don't know, 100? <laughs> what do you think, 200? <clears throat> that can get down into the fourth dimension. Uh, fairies being the ones that have the biggest range. They were seen last and most frequently um, because they just wanted to hang tight with humans because they love to mess with them. And they're good at doing those kind of jumps. Yeah, and they've just got extreme range. They've just got very good range. Um, I would say, what would, what would you say, mermaids before that? Next Fairies, range. mermaids, yeah. yeah. Um, dragons. Dragons. Now, a dragon can show up any time, but I don't think I have seen anybody truly talk about a real dragon. Because there's a lot of creatures that are smaller than true dragons that are called dragons. <coughs> but they're not true dragons. True dragons are huge they're huge. They fill up the sky. I mean, they're just huge. And they don't go around popping into little versions and big versions like fairies do. They usually <coughs> are huge. And they usually can't be seen. And uh, I think occasionally they might, depending upon if the person jumps up. But they have a big range. They just are... Their vibration isn't based on dimensions. They're outside of dimensions. They're outside of time. So they can come cruising across any part of this game and be seen, but you would have to know the vibrations because they're very unique, very different vibration than <coughs> anything else because they're not a magical creature. They are a being that is in the now. Uh, they just prefer to stay in, in their God self where I'm light or I would be just a real bright light is what you would see on the other side. The dragons prefer to stay in dragon form. And they've been that way for ever. For a very longer time than I could explain to you. So, shapeshifters. Hmm? Shapeshifters. Shape sh oh, yeah, shapeshifters. They were definitely, you would have seen them. Although people talk themselves out of that yeah. all the time. They say, oh, that didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. Shapeshifters are like, yeah, they were one of the last to go. Mm -hmm. Then they could reach down into the fourth dimension. But nobody goes to the third. Uh -uh, nobody. The person comes up to them. Gargoyles. Just, oh, yeah, gargoyles. That was another one. So, okay, so we got Gaia dropping through the fifth dimension and going into the fourth dimension, and she calls for help. But like I've told you guys, you have no idea. Oh, wait a minute. Before I go into there, <laughs> I want to clarify something. When you're in fifth dimension, maybe I'll do another video on that. No. When you're in fifth dimension, I've talked about, you know, you can do anything you want. And I've talked about more magical stuff and more on the planet. But let me be clear. When I say you can do anything, I mean anything. So there is very much tech on 5D Earth. You can create any kind of tech, anything you want. You can make yourself a robot. You can... Become Make a your, robot. You can become a robot. You can become a spaceship. 
and you can fly. There's space all over the place around 5D. It's the, the difference is you don't have to, you be, you make it and you, or you become it. You don't have to go buy it. You don't have to learn to fly it. You don't you build don't, it. You don't build it. it. You are creating it with instant manifestation. And you can do that with literally anything. And uh, uh, many people do. So I've heard a lot of people that are like into tech and space travel and stuff. They go, oh, no, I'd rather stay in 4D. No, you wouldn't. Because in 4D, you've got a boss. You've got to work up through the ranks. And let me tell you right now, there's hardly anybody that's lower in the intergalactic multiverse <laughs> scale than humans coming into 4D for the first time. Everybody else is ahead of you. So you're not going to get into 4D and then just go, okay, well, a year later, I'm going to be flying a spaceship. No, you won't. You've got a lot of people that are a lot better at this than you are. But if you go to 5D, you can become the spaceship and fly anytime, anywhere you want. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, you don't, you're not beholden to anybody. You are out of a great deal of your, your amnesia and you'll be even more in the process. And there's lots of people there that will teach you. And there are, will be people there in 5D that are original humans. So you, when you get to 5D, you'll be able to meet them. So it'll be the original humans meeting the 3D humans is what will happen. It will be amazing. You guys will love it. Okay, so we've got every race that you can imagine all squished into one human body because all she did was took the energy of human. This is the energy that's going to be human, and we're going to split it in two. We're going to split it in two, and we're going to split it into masculine and feminine. Okay? That's what Gaia did. Then she dropped it down, and there she didn't put a whole mass of humans on the planet. Just, you know, a nice round number. Oh, there's a group of them. Pretty good group, but they're, you know, not that many. Uh, and she dropped down and she made a call out to the fourth dimension who do know how to talk. And she said, okay, this is the deal. I'm coming down in the fourth dimension. I've got these animals, which is what you are, your animals. And I'm going to take them down through 4D and, and go even further. And I need some assistance. How do I do this? How do, how do we start this process? And that's when other intergalactic groups came in and they took that original human and they all took bits and pieces. So they started fractaling that all race human into different race, what you call different races, okay? So this group would take all of these attributes and they said, okay, we're taking these and that's going to be our people and this is how you do that. So you fractal it this way. And another group took this one, another group took this one. And over the years... um these many different races were created, but there's, there's really not that many on the planet. And it was a long, 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 long time ago. Okay. Now, also involved in this, because it, it's a little bit more complex than that, is the humans just went into 4D. After this was in the process of going on, during the process of, of Gaia dropping through 4D, which she did really rapidly, by the way. She kind of went, it's, whoom, that's why she called for help, because she didn't want to hang around and learn how to do all this stuff. So, because her goal was 3D, and then come back out. So, what they did in the process of doing all of this is there was a lot of tweaking, and there was the, what you all call Bigfoot, that was on the planet, and had been on the planet in 5D2. They have very high vibrations. But they became more in tune with Gaia. They they work with Gaia. They changed their look so that they would stay with Gaia. So it was a, a, a fractal that was more Gaian based. Okay? It was still a fractal of the of the composite that became what you know of as human. So basically, as they fractaled down Gaia's version of the multi-race human, when they started to fractal, there wasn't enough animal in the humans. So when they fractaled them down, because Gaia had built this all humans on the fifth dimension, which really wasn't getting into the hardcore duality, the tough stuff. So they took from the Bigfoot, 
which she had pretty much deposited on the planet right before it dropped into Fort D. And it just started morphing. She created that one to kind of morph along with the changes that were being done by, on the planet. So the drops in dimensions, they just kind of went with it. Very much just in sync, like most animals and plants on this planet do, if they're not interfered with. So that's what the Bigfoot did too. So when the other people came in and they took their bits and divided up, fractaled up this multiracial human that we all came from, then they would frequently, depending upon what they were going for, they would take the Bigfoot too, that information too, if they wanted, let's say, a bigger, stronger people, a tougher pe people that would be able to uh, survive in harsher climates. Um, they took bits and pieces from Bigfoot in different ways to create the different races. Okay? So, yeah. Did that cover it? Was that everything? Mm, you didn't actually else? tell me what the... <clears throat> What I was going to be talking about. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's how we went through. So that's where we came from. And you should know why we why we came here. How, when, why, where. I think that answers all of it. Now, I know everybody wants to know, well, which was the first race that was created. Um, they happened so similarly that no one cares. You know, if you go up to 5D and ask Gaia, she's going to go, why do you care? What difference does it make? The It has nothing to do with anything. Those were created, the different races were created in order to fractal the human race into pieces and cause problems. <laughs> because that's what the lower dimensions are. It, it more deeper you go, the more amnesia you've got, the more amnesia you've got, the less God powers you have, and the more you have the experience of not being a God. That is the point. You came here not to remember that you were a God. No, no, no. That was never the point. The point is to forget that you're a God. And forgetting that you're a God is extremely difficult to get done. It's taken a long time and a lot of work to, get, to make this possible. What you've been living your whole lives, most of you not having a clue that you're gods, truly understanding the gods that you are. That took a lot of work. And it was all the systems and the beliefs and the generation after generation, millions upon millions of years, that set up this place so that you could just plop in in amnesia and stay as long as you like, having the experience of not being a god. So, oh, I know what else I wanted to say. So, after everybody got their races, and pretty much once they were all set in place, the uh, and they were up and rocking and rolling well, the the people that the the intergalactic people that started this situation, they just kind of booked it. Most of them, not all of them, most of them. And all of this, it's it's way more complicated than this, but I'm, I'm which is why I haven't brought it up. But I'm trying to make it simpler for you. Because there's also people that live in the Middle Earth, and there's also people that live under the water, and there's also people that live in the center of the Earth. And somebody asked me how they have a light in the center of the Earth. It's not that hard. It's really, really big. So there is a, a form of atmosphere. There are plants. There's oxygen. There's, oh, it looks like, it. if you're down there, it looks like that, it looks like daytime up here. There's really not a great deal of difference. I don't know that you would necessarily notice the difference if you were just, you know, teleported down there. And nobody told you. Well, you'd notice the difference in the people because they're way different. But the place itself, uh, the plants are a lot bigger. They grow a lot better because it's like a terrarium. It's better designed, honestly. Yeah, it's, it it's makes a, more sense. Yeah, it's a much <clears throat> better. It's very, very efficient. Uh, they use a lot of crystals. They use a lot of... Uh, so they have light whenever they want to. It's a lot. It's very beautiful. It's very pretty, and there's a lot of nighttime glowy things that are like from dark places, and they use that kind of like Avatar. Those things that would glow in their nighttime, like that. So they've got lots of light sources. If they wanted to be blasting light all the time, they control their 
how how uh, light it is and how dark it is, and they it it stays really consistent all the time. They don't have a change in the length of the day or anything. It's very much the same all the time. Uh, temperature is very much the same. Very pleasant in there. So uh, I'm not sure where people got the whole center of the Earth is lava that's rolling around. Lava and a giant hunk of metal of some kind. Yeah, or a giant. I don't know where all that comes from. Now, are, scientists are there versions of Earth? Yeah, that's been taught so much that you can actually go to a timeline where there are no people living in the center of the Earth. Feel free to. I don't really care what you do, but uh, the the main planet Earth with Gaia absolutely has people living in the center of the Earth. And that was a fractaline thing, too, because once everybody was in different races, then they had to continue to fractal down. Well, everything is based on contrast, contra um, contrast, good, bad, light, dark, the whole shebang. So what happened first was all these different races. First we came as one race. Those were split into different races. Then what they did is they set the races upon themselves. So they would have each race fight its own race. And they set them, you know, with greed and power and land and food and, and control. And they set all the races against themselves first. Okay, that was the first step. And they beat, each, beat themselves up for extensively long time. Some still are. Well, frequently, a lot of them still are. And then they set them against each other based on the race. Because, and it was a smart move. Because if you can get a people to kill their own kind, it's much easier to get them to kill somebody that's not like them. That's just human nature. And that just helped. All of that were stages of of lowering to the third dimension. It's what all of that was for. It's not a race war. It's not a race fight. It was all done to fractal down so the people could have the experience of not being gods. Uh, I, nobody in the process of any of this was in 4D going, oh, well, we don't want to create something where this group will hate this group and there will be hate speech and we'll throw them in jail or somebody will get killed. That's not how it was done. It was done to fractal down, to create more chances so that a person could come here and forget they're a god. If you put enough things in place, break it down enough times, then that amnesia, and you add linear time space and throw it down, uh, slow it down, slow it down, <clears throat> that is how you get somebody in amnesia. But you've got to convince them that they're nothing, and you have to do it a lot. And that's one really, really good way of, of doing it. Uh, also, money is a good way. Education is a good way. All of those things are in place, and that's how they worked. Now, for beings that were along the way, dropping from 5D down to coming out of 5D and dropping down, there were groups of people that when things started to go lower, they went, ah, I don't want to. And those are the ones that went somewhere else. They either went to the middle of the earth, center of the earth, under the water, somewhere away from the chaos that was being created, and they d didn't drop because they didn't want to, but they still lived here, uh, but they were totally inaccessible because they were a higher dimension than civilized mankind. So civilized mankind, they come up and they say, oh, we're all wise and wonderful, we know all these things, because they didn't remember, because of the plan, that they had actually come from a place that had much higher uh, technology, much more knowledge, and much more memory of being of the God self's power. Because all of that amnesia inched away. It isn't like you went from, okay, I know I'm a God and I can do everything, to I've forgotten everything. It's not like that. It's little bit by little bit it's taken away. That amnesia grows over lifetimes. So the ones that really, 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 really don't want to remember a thing about being gods, they've been here the longest. Those are the long-term humans I talk about. And you cannot stop them. You will not stop them. There is nothing you can say that will convince them that they are a god in any way, shape, or form. They've worked very hard to make sure that no one can touch their game. And they have got a very intense game to play. All right. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to say on this one. If not, I'll say it on the next one, right?
Okay, guys, that's it. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.